So there it is, the end of an era. That's my last Voyager trailer build. So, back to van life. Finally, our bed frame is fully fitted. Our bike slide is in place, our storage slide is in place, and now I'm concentrating on fitting my three lithium ion Renogy batteries. Hi guys, we're Van Life My Way. My name's Nikki. And I'm Paul. We're a husband and wife team who have had many adventures over the years and now we're planning to take early retirement and make Van Life our next adventure. Coming from a background of equipping vehicles for overland and expedition travel, we hope you'll find our van build of interest as we create a van perhaps better suited to modern van life. So do come along on our journey as we build our mobile home whilst taking you on some mini adventures in our camper van, Rad the Silver Surfer. So just before we get started, I've got to point this out to you. Now just behind the driver's seat, this is called the B-pillar. And in the B-pillar, you'll find a lot of electric componentry. Now this has been specifically put into this vehicle for coach builders. This type of vehicle is often used to build many types and styles of motorhomes. So the manufacturer puts all of these electrics in here specifically to be picked up on by anybody wanting to convert this vehicle into a motorhome. So here, I've already managed to pick up a DC to DC feed which runs to my CTEC and I'm sure in there somewhere I'm going to find myself an ignition life feed to run to my Victron unit. And I run my wires all the way up this B-pillar, all the way along the top of my van and most of those wires are now running down through there feeding my charge control system. I found an ignition life supply that I need here in the B-pillar in this unit just here. These points just here and here and where this fuse is I was hoping I could find the clip to put onto the end of this wire I need clip it into the back of this unit and just bridge across there with another fuse but I can't seem to find those clips available but what I'm going to do just for speed is use this little thing here called a piggyback. The way a piggyback works is you can remove the existing fuse that's in place locate that into the piggyback and pop the piggyback where the fuse came from and that maintains the previous existing circuit. What you've now got is a spare live feed and if you pop another fuse in there it becomes a fuse live feed. So all I'm going to do is pop in the piggyback and join that wire to the wire that I've got that runs all the way to the rear of my van to supply my ignition live feed to my Victron unit. The reason why we need an ignition live feed to this Victron unit is because this Victron unit starts charging our household batteries when it detects that the engine is on and there's a charge coming from the vehicle's alternator. Unfortunately, the CTEC unit also supplies a higher voltage to the van's battery when it's charging from the solar. This confuses the Victron unit, thinking that the engine's running, so it turns itself on and could flatten our van battery. So the ignition live feed that I took from the B-pillar finishes just here at a little junction box where I've linked it through a tiny fused wire to the H-pin of the Victron unit. So the Victron unit now will only turn on when the ignition is turned on on the vehicle and the vehicle's engine is running, therefore saving our van's battery from perhaps being flattened. A couple of useful gadgets here. One is the Dymo letter to a tag, mm -hmm. which is great because it's allowing us to put all bits and pieces on here like that tell us where things are coming from and also an oodie <laughs> I now have my three Renji batteries installed this one battery supplies power to my inverter that I'm going to be using to charge my mountain bikes and supply 240 volt power to the rest of the van it draws its charge from this CTEC unit which in turn draws its power from the DC to DC port that I found in the B pillow and also my two solar cells in the front of the van which are 160 watt between them. My other two batteries supply my house power. They're charged via two Victron units. One MPPT charger which draws its power from the two larger solar cells I have on my roof while the DC to DC charger draws its power from the battery installed in the front of the van with a 100 amp mega fuse in there for protection. I bolted the mega fuse directly to this battery terminal and cushioned it on a bit of sponge. My shore power comes in here at the side of the van in a marine socket in stainless steel rather than the usual plastic. 
The power comes in here through the side of the van with an access port I've put in there just in case I need to maintain that socket. The shore power comes straight into the van and straight to this priority switch. The priority switch allows me to switch between shore power and inverter power without actually physically switching the button. This allows me to use all of my 240 volt sockets inside the van without having to have a separate system for both shore power and inverter power. The priority switch will automatically prioritize shore power over inverter power, saving you some battery life. The priority switch also has a spare port at the bottom that comes from shore power only. And I have this going to this RCD box here, which will feed the boiler in my van. The other port from the priority switch goes straight to this RCD box here, which supplies all of the sockets in my van. I chose Renogy Smart Lithium Phosphate batteries because not only did they fit exactly in the space that I had available, but the batteries communicate with each other via this USB cable and USB ports. Both sets of batteries also communicate with these two devices up here, which tell me their state of charge, the amperage that's been used through them and their voltage. The batteries I can put to sleep by pressing these buttons so when they're not in use I can protect the batteries by putting them into shelf mode. So that's my two... <laughs> so that's my two DC to DC systems and my two solar systems installed and charging these batteries. As yet we've got no household appliance running off these batteries but it won't be long before we've got one or two of those installed. In my next video log I'm hoping to have my installed water tank plumbed in and piping some water. So thanks for watching.